Uh, Joe Fotel Fotoleo Artistic Aerials. Thank you for a five dollar super chat. I fly DJI FPV and I'm getting a V3 Evoke DC with an O3 air unit. Should I go with or without Crossfire built in? Buying a bind and fly. I mean, I, I, the question is, what uh, if you have the DJI FPV drone? Then you have the gray uh, controller. At which point, I think there's a compelling argument. You should just buy the Evoke and use your gray controller that you already own. I mean, there are some advantages to Crossfire, sure, but uh, a lot of people who fly DJI are happy using that gray controller. And I think, uh, I don't think there's a, like you'd have to also buy another controller. And I think for a lot of people, the right answer is just keep using that one and save yourself the trouble and the money. Um, Jesse Fellers wants to know, 4S or 6S? What do you prefer? Thank you for $2, Jesse. 6S. Um, uh, 6S has the most, the, the, the thing I notice most about 6S is less voltage sag at the end of the pack. Uh, Kevin Murray says, what's a good lap timer or a method of timing laps by myself? Thank you for a $5 super chat. Um, well, a good question. So, um, If you can find one of these, if you can find one of these, these are great. I have one. I got it a long time ago, and you basically can't find them. So you're going to have to build your own. Um, no. Yeah, this is the one. The next thing to look at is rotor hazard. In my opinion, this is the, le 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 how am I going to put this? There are other lap timers that are good, but this seems to be the one that has the biggest following after like the immersion RC lap RF. Um, rotor hazard can be a big complicated build. Uh, if you're building like a full eight way timer, right? Do, but you don't have to do that. Well, I'm trying to find the link. Somebody help me find the link to like the the single node version of Lap RF or a rotor hazard. Single. There we go. Single node. So this, if I was an individual person, not running an event with like eight different pilots, this is probably what I would do. And you can build this with a single RX fifty eight oh eight module and a single Arduino Nano and some wires. And I think you're, some people th say you should have some resistors on these wires, but this instructions doesn't say you have to do that. And basically this is a one-way lap timer. Uh, do you need a laptop? You need a laptop to run the rotor hazard server. That's a little annoying. It's just annoying because you'd need a laptop out at the field. Whereas if you have a Raspberry Pi, if you have a Raspberry Pi, you can do it that way. Um, I'm going to come back here to the chat now. Uh, Blunty, has there been any other suggestions like chat? Are there any good single node timers for individuals that are easier and more self-contained than the rotor hazard single node? Uh, Blunty, I'm going to throw that question out and then... I'm going to move on and we'll come back to it if you if you notice anything, okay? Well, going back to the question about the lap timer. This is one that was, thank you so much to 1IFPV for this. FPV Sim Timer 2.0, a modern cross-platform lap timing and race coaching system. Uh, this is a single source. It's a single, uh, it basically, you just build this one thing and it works for you. ESP32. I have those. Wait a minute. Was that the same as the thing I bought for the spoofer? It is. Oh, my God. I have another use for these ESP32 boards that I bought to make the remote ID spoofer. I'm totally going to make lap timers out of these. That's amazing. That's really cool. Look how easy this is. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, I got to buy some RX 5808 modules right now. I've, I was like, okay, I bought these, but I'm not going to use a, re a remote ID spoofer in the real world. I can't, I can't get myself in trouble like that. So then I was like, what am I going to do with these? I'm going to make lap timers out of them. That's amazing. And then I'm going to give them away. I don't know. <laughs> okay, that's what you should do. Um, so I would say, I will say, again, that, that URL is fpvsim.com fpvsim.com slash timer. Um, I will say the uh, Rotor Hazard one, Rotor Hazard is an exceptional piece of software for event management. If you ever are going to manage a race with like multiple racers, you know, four racers at a time or maybe 20 racers in five heats of four, Rotor Hazard is amazing. Uh, so... If that's you, that you might steer towards Rotor Hazard and start familiarizing yourself with it, but it's a pretty big investment. Um, you need something to run the software, whereas this looks like it's completely self-contained on the ESP board, which is pretty cool. It also, maybe it, uh, oh no, it has a script. Does it have a subscription? Is this paid? I'm annoyed if it's paid. I guess, I mean, God forbid people should make money. Can you at least just do it alone without paying? I'm not sure about that. Mm, oh, anyway, you have your choice. Nope, that's the wrong scene. I pressed the wrong button. Uh, thank you, 1IFPV, for that. Riza Evil, sorry if I've said your name wrong, asks, I just got in from crashing my GetBRC Synalog 35 V1 HD and it's all kind of broken. Can I get parts for it? Um... Cinelog, which one is it? The GetBRC Cinelog 3.5. I mean, if we go, so obviously you're not going to buy a whole new bind and fly. That's silly. But I think GetBRC should sell all the parts. Like if I search for Cinelog 3.5 frame, you can buy the frame separately. You can buy the flight controller separately. You can buy the motor separately. Uh, I think you need to go to getbarc.com, though. They're probably not like at your, your your average retailer. Black Jungle, thank you for five Brazilian ray eyes. A lithium ion pack, 4S2P. Is that too much for a seven inch cruiser? Nah, no way. That's fine. Uh, iFlight makes a 6S2P for their seven inch. So 4S2P is no problem. You're good to go. Quad City Bay Area, thank you for $2. TBS still alive. How can they come back? I think what you're asking is, are they even alive to come back? Well, Trappy says they are. Uh, so there you go. He would know. Um, Jeremy Pierce Sania, thank you for a $2 super chat. How do I bind my O3 air unit to my V2 goggles? Uh, Jeremy, you need to have the V2 goggles on the latest firmware and you need to go into the settings. Is it settings about Blunty? I can never remember. Um, I believe so. I'm not sure. All right. Neither of us is sure. I think it's I settings know. about. Go. Yeah, you can change the goggle mode to O3 mode. That's probably why it won't bind. <laughs> 